Hey, Katie Girls, it's Sunday, April 16th, 2023, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. Hunties, it's tea time because it's our fifth episode here at COLDR where we are reviewing the U.S. based season 15. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. So, for those of you that don't know who we are, my name's Gary, and with me is my ever fabulous co host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome to the show. We're twins. <laughs> we're twins because we're both wearing our same shirt today. Um, yes. So <laughs> consent is my foreplay, baby, especially when it comes to all things drag. Right. Uh, before we get into that, though, I do want to say um, to Damon a particular thing because we need to recognize something that has been achieved. Oh. Well, I don't know if you know uh, oh, or no. caught this, but... Baby, it is our 150th. Oh, <laughs> yay. Congrats on uh, many years <laughs> of doing this. And what's funny is thing. that was literally sitting right in front of me. I didn't see it. Big clock it. <laughs> yeah. Um, believe it yeah. or not, this is our 150th episode. Um, we started, I'd have to try to look it up and that would be too much effort at the moment, given my setup, um, to look it up. But I think we started in, uh, maybe season five, eight or something. Hold on. I'm trying to pull up stuff now. Um, you keep talking. So yeah, we, um, Damon and I do the regular Cubs Out Loud, uh, Cubs Out Loud podcast. And in the midst of, Doing that, you know, we both knew that we liked RuPaul's Drag Race. And at that time, there was only the U.S.-based series. Mm -hmm. And we had been watching it, and it was like, oh, oh, yes? How old? So (laughs) we started with season seven. Okay. Episode one on March 7th, so almost um, March 7th, 2015. Okay, yeah. So we're talking about almost um, uh, a little over math is hard. Eight years. Uh, eight years. Gosh darn it. I was doing, trying to do the math. That's okay. Eight years. Yeah, so, so uh, yeah, that seems about right. I knew it was in the in the single digits. We hadn't got to 10 yet. Um, and, yeah, we, we decided that we wanted to have a, a chit-chat and – do a little podcast show where we discuss that. So we have covered just the U.S. based series. So it's been regular seasons and all stars ever since then. Um, By the way, congrats to Gary and his um, OCD like um, notation skills. We have a wonderful episode matrix for those <laughs> in the background audience, so you can kind of understand why this was so quick to find. Literally, I went. I knew we had the episode makers, and I'm like, I wonder, I hope it's caught up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Book, and sure enough, it is. And not only that, for those, again, listening and watching, um, Gary keeps it color-coded by our seasons. Yes, there's usually so, a theme to mm-hmm. each season, and so our visuals are based off of the reveal of mm-hmm. the queens each season. So, like, I think it was last year was Candyland. Mm -hmm. Um, was this kind of, you know, gamey thing. So it was bright, poppy, like kind of pastel-y colors. This year it's like hot pink um, and black and white with little pops of yellow. So, so, yay. So congratulations to you as well. This has been an amazing experience and I'm happy we do it. Um, It's great. I'm so happy that we keep doing this and keep going strong. Yeah. Uh, okay. And and for those that don't know, if you were to go back into the COLDR um, archive, so to speak, we, de- we do used to do this weekly, every single episode of every single uh, U.S. based show. And I think about uh, two years ago or so, we, we kind of shifted because of schedules and different things. Um, and so we're doing a couple episodes at a time. Um, in fact, it's funny, David, when you reached out to me and you're like, are we like, are we going to do the show on Sunday? And for some reason in my head, I was like, well, we could, but like, we were going to wait until the finale was over. Like I, for some reason was not 
in it that the finale was coming up on Friday. Like, heads, we would record today, and that I already had planned for us to record today and had the dock and everything ready. For some reason, I was in this weird time loop thing, and I was thinking it was a week ago, and I was like, sure, we could talk about, you know, the the last competitive episode and then the reunion and whatever. And then I was like, oh, no, that's right. Yeah, we're here. <laughs> We're here, baby. Like, this is it. Like. Yes. So uh, we are going to be discussing episodes 14, 15, and 16 of this most recent season, um, which happened to be Blame It on the Edit, Reunited, and Finale. So uh, it kind of goes without reason or standing, but I'm just going to uh, say it for the sake of being able to do it, because I don't think that um, we want anyone to who hasn't been made aware yet what's uh, going to be part of our discussion today. <laughs> See, I'm not going to be able to get that to work. I can, o- I can only do one thing at a time. But that being said, um, so we're going to be discussing uh, what happened with our final contestants, how many it whittled down to, and ultimately who lip synced for the crown. So, uh, that being said, uh, you want to get into our first segment? Let's do it. Okay. (laughs) Quick on the draw. Wrong button. (laughs) Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. (laughs) Shouldn't have taken that nap. (laughs) Oh, okay, mistress. Ay, 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 ay. All right, so it's um it's time for serves, swerves, and nerves. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, serves are the positive things, swerves are the not so good things, and then nerve could be really good or really bad, depending on how much nerve you got, girl. <laughs> okay, Willow Pill. I saw that. I saw that the finale. Uh huh. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. Well, that's her. That's in her wheelhouse. That that works. That's true. It's very true. Okay. All right. So, Damon, who are you giving serves to? So, I have one serve, and it makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's Sasha Colby. And in particular, her during the Blame It on the Edit, um, the f- final episode before, like, the final four. We'll get to that. Um, like, final, like, our top four moment. And just hitting everything and doing everything super well mm-hmm. like the choreography got it good um looking really fantastic i love the like pamela anderson like bombshell or whatever they call her reference and um uh her look in the alien like single while she's doing her verse was amazing her finale runway look was gorgeous um all the like tea and there was there's a moment where RuPaul gives her like the props Mm -hmm. that I don't you never expect RuPaul to really say and I was just like okay RuPaul I mean I I, it's great to hear but whoo you kind of that's a that's a card that you don't normally show um Right. Infamously, at least in the USB season, one or two queens a year recently <clears throat> have been given the you were born to do drag edit mm-hmm. like queen mother, like right. uh, anoints, quote unquote, you mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. as someone who is destined for this career, this this industry, this, you know, mm-hmm. um, entertainment art form. And, and yes, I, I even I was surprised that they threw that in. Mm-hmm. And she was just kind of really going off on her, but in in mm-hmm. the in the positive way was yeah. was it was, was a, it was a yeah it, it was it, a great go ahead it, well what I was gonna say is it goes to show why everyone talks so much about Sasha Colby like she was mm-hmm. known before she came on the show, and when Carrie Colby came on it infamously um, Jazz Mind Kennedy kept going on and on and on about Sasha Colby and uh-huh. you know <laughs> and it was one of those things where it was like oh my god like for the love of everything but like. She honestly delivered, and it's kind of strange to me, a little bit, that Rue was like, you really are the it thing. And I was Mm -hmm. like, well, baby, where the fuck have you been? Like, maybe you do live in an ivory tower, and you're just, like, out of touch (laughs) with the rest of the world, but, you know. Fair. Like, that could probably be the case. Like, Sasha, why would would RuPaul know Sasha Colby just because she's Miss Continental? 
or whatever, or she's been around the block forever. Like no one, why would why would Rue know that? Well, she showed up on the show. Like, sorry, uh, I'm being no, no, that's that's fair because it's season fifteen. I get the impression that at least the first four to five seasons, Rue knew of people, and infamously, like Raja's talked about it, Delta's talked about it, um, mm-hmm. Chad Michaels has talked about it. Um, uh, Kylie Sonique, like they've all talked about how back in the day, Rue would go out to clubs and see the queens perform. And, you know, and infamously, Raja got hand me downs from RuPaul before uh, she started the, the competition television show. And I believe. And, and so, knowing that history, there's a part of me that's like, yeah, you really kind of fell out of the know because now you're really 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 famous and you can't go fucking nowhere like like you can't you have to really kind of hide yourself and there's been some stories recently in the past two years i want to say like after covid where she popped up and like pulled a stunt where like she was in a wheelchair and she had an afghan and like a hat and these like granny like sunglasses on or whatever like to really super hide who she was Uh to see somebody you know and then you know pretty much left quickly after like seeing what she wanted to see and uh in combo kind of getting clocked um Mm. and and so i could feel like you know you're kind of not there but there's part of me it's like really like but anyways no she she gave props as she should yeah and just Sasha just is, has her that was her fourth win. She did win that episode, spoiler. Um, and it it just made me see that this was really her moment. Mm-hmm. This was a great time for her, and I was super happy with it. Um, um, the person, by the way, you mentioned like the born to do drag statement that Rue has given. That actually went to Anitra this season. Uh, you're right. She gave it to Anitra. I think she might have also said it to Jax. Maybe. Maybe. Um, because when 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 the fandom, the fanatics hear it, they're like, "Oh, they're going to the finale!" Like they just they <laughs> feel like you know that's a that's like the blessing that gets you through to the end or whatever. Mm. Um, but I do agree. Like you know. It, it was it was well deserved. However, I do have like this slight issue with the blaming on the edit, the music video. Um, well, there were two things. One, Mama, they did Mistress wrong, so wrong. Like you know that you know what it is because now it's a meme, it's a gif, like it's a thing uh-huh. of her on the turntable looking like she's falling backwards. Yeah, the floating like gravity like moment. And I yeah. commented in our Telegram chat. I was like, did anybody clock this from the previous video when Kimchi nearly like broke her fucking neck falling off the turntable? Like, anyways. Um, but it but it wasn't like that. That was one thing that they did wrong by. But with Sasha, I didn't catch it when I watched the music video the first time. But then after they showed the full color version, I was like, Mama, what is that on your goddamn head? And, like, she had on her headdress this, like, piece of, like, one inch or inch and a half band of fabric. I don't even think it's lace that, like, comes around on the top. And it's, like, peach or orange or something. And it doesn't blend into her skin. I don't know what the story is with it. And now every single time I watch the black and white video, I can totally see where that that thing is. You're going to make me go look for it. (laughs) And I was like... Sasha, what, what, what? Like, why would you do that? And I was like, and then I thought, well, maybe production was being assholes and they didn't tell her how bad it looked, you know, like, and they tried to convince her that it wouldn't show up in the black and white. But I was like, mm, okay. I don't know. <laughs> Give me a second. Now you're going to make me look. But yeah, I was like, that was really about the only thing from the music video itself that that mm-hmm. kind of stood out to me. Um, I mean, Lux got accolades from people that I was aware of, you know, and online that she sang and rapped and yeah. how that was a bold move and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, this kid is playing the game. Her right. every look, every statement, every quote, like everything is a reference. She yeah. is she is she is clawing her way to take the crown and scepter in like such a gamesmanship way um, as to know the history, the legacy of the series. Um, So I was like, not surprised that, you know, she knew that 
singing and rapping would be something unique and different and would probably make her stand out. Okay, let's skip this. <laughs> um, oh, wait. <sighs> do, 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 and come on. There we go. Okay. I see what you mean. I see it now. Okay. There we right? Go. Uh-huh. I get it. Okay. I haven't seen I didn't see the color picture. But if the video was in color, like that would have looked horrible. Maybe that's why I was in black and white. Uh oh listen. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. If nothing else hides the flaws, change the color. Yeah, I don't, I don't, but that's not something I think that Sasha I would, Sasha I, would allow. Like, I think, I think she, it was a, maybe it was something that she couldn't avoid. You know what I mean? Like, the the headpiece needed something to like hold it down. At that point, I really did a real quick like pause at this yeah. moment as I'm looking at it, because as you, as I'm looking at it, hi everybody, sorry, don't mind me, this is me <laughs> rambling. Um, so the headpiece kind of goes up like this, and it has this fall of crystals on that appeared supposed to I think would be connected to like look like it was connected to the face or the mm. organ. so I'm wondering if it was there and if maybe she had had time mm -hmm. and effort she could have blended that in it's because it's not lace it looks almost like a nude fabric, kind of like the rest of the outfit. So I'm wondering right. if maybe that was supposed to be the intention, but it's not the same color. We've had this, we've talked about this many times before on this show about like nude illusion, nude fabric, not being accurate to like skin tone. Hell, it's even uh, screwed over Mama Roo. Right. As so, I pointed yeah, out this right. season. Right. So that's a possibility that it was something that happened in that instance. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you brought what you brought. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it, it was well done. It just is. Yes. Once I saw the colorized like shot or whatever, I was like, wait, what the fuck was that? And I rewound it. And then, and now every time I look at the black and white, I can't not see that extra thing. So it's, it's kind of funny how <laughs> illusion does that to you. Like once you it know the reality. Me. The illusion is broken. Yes, 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 yes. And what about you, Mr. Gary? Um, so I want I, I have to recognize uh Irene at the reunion. Holy first queen out, pork chop parker exit. Uh man, did she like not fade away in any shape or form? Lots of speculation about the fact that she had a front seat down right like next to Mama Roo. Right. Um and I don't know what the story is behind that because speculation is she should have been in the back row and probably further away from Rue because she was the first queen to leave. Right. Um, but as other people have speculated, what a different season it would have been if Irene had bestayed because she apparently online revealed all her looks for all mm -hmm. of the different, you know, uh, runway themes and got us some different back and forth with some of the queens and – you know, the people are kind of talking. I heard one comment which made me laugh, which was kind of like, give Mistress and Irene a goddamn show. Like, you know. <laughs> and I was like, well, I think that might have been one potential way this could have gone this season. Um, so, yeah, like, I, I found that very, very interesting. But she really held her own and made an impression. And I loved that her quip when they do the pan of each queen on the balcony or the steps or whatever at the theater where she was uh -huh. like, and I'm a bitch. Like she just <laughs> owned it. Cause she was like, yeah. this is my edit. Like, this is how I got presented out of one episode. So here we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she looked amazing. Like just right. so fucking amazing. I love that look. I love, I, I will, I will own, I appreciated Irene in the, in the, there are moments and I'll get to those later, but there's like, she she never she didn't hold back a whole lot. Um, she definitely was holding her own, mm -hmm. and I think unlike most of the queens, she has the quote unquote least to lose because she went home first. We don't usually remember the queens that went home first in a lot of ways, and sure. for ill or nil, you know. Right. Um, but 
she's not going to be forgotten. No, I mean, it's funny that you say that because um, I was like, Princess Poppy who? Like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> David spit takes. No, I mean, like, I, I barely remembered much about her. But to be honest, her reunion look, mama, <laughs> talk about serving, like, Rebecca Glasscock entrance, like, uh -huh. realness. Mm -hmm. I was like, when, when she came up on the screen with her quote and that she's quitting drag, I was like, oh, uh, okay, like, but that's the, some of the biggest balls I've ever seen out of a queen. And then I was really intrigued to see what she brought to the finale. And I was really impressed. Like, yeah, she had a really well put together look. And, and I was like, uh, OK, it was it was a reference to Mean Girls. That's right. Yeah. The whole like it was supposed to be like the, it obviously was moving. So it wasn't like the full like structured like back right. brace thing for um um. Regina George. Woo. That, yes. That was, a, that, that was glad I got that memory out there. Um, but uh, I, I, that's another queen that has some, 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 some cojones or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. She, her look was so plain, like her reunion look was so plain and and dull like you 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 go oh what is she wearing and then you think about it i thought about it and i was like oh right. I, really, I knew it i knew it from the jump i, I exactly clocked it, going for it i right? clocked it when they did the pan with the with the voiceover quote i was like wait i've seen this before i was like you don't pick streetwalker day look as yeah. just this random thing and I was like, I know this has got to be. And so, of course, I went on Twitter and sure enough, like the Twitter Audi had already clocked it. We're doing side by side mm -hmm. images. It just cracked me up. Um, yeah. I was a little disappointed that the shirt wasn't a good, good a better match. Yeah. Like while it the needed... color was there, it needed to have more, I think, the spaghetti strap style and a black something, something logo. Like an emblem like, or something yeah. on it. Yeah. I don't know where the shirt was from. And again, I, I. Harkening back that far, harkening back to season one, we remembered, we all remember season one. We remember what season one looked like in the basement of the Alamo that they were doing at that moment. Like, <laughs> like we get it. Girl, we remember the Vaseline lens edit. Right, I mean, come on. Right, right. Like, Everything was very things. soft. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but it, and we, we knew. Like this, the, the, it's funny because the cycle, you know, has gone around like fifteen plus times at this point. Mm -hmm. We count all the seasons and all the all stars. Now the queens know the game for sure and right. know what they're walking into, and know that that first impression is quite important. Whereas in seasons past, it wasn't as big a deal. Well, I mean, it, to be fair, the first season, the first two seasons, no one really knew what it was going to become. Um, infamously, lots of queens have said when this first thing came out, they were like, I don't know. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and eventually they all kind of most of them, especially in the L.A. area, have signed on um, and, and gotten on the show at some point, even even if it took them lots of times. Uh, and then again, this goes back to Sasha or they were very intelligent and they waited their turn. Because mm -hmm. they felt, they have felt predestined. Sasha said this in interviews. There is a time, and I was waiting for mine, and I felt this was the time. And I was like, absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with that. And she technically, you know, is the oldest queen of this particular season. And, and I'm only bringing that up because I think sometimes there's really a lot to be said for the experience that you bring to the competition. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair, I think I've talked about this before where she's, she has a plethora of previous contestants to get a game prep from mm -hmm. to understand what the show's like and, and you know, what production is like and, and that kind of stuff. Exactly. There's a, there's a, there's a way like biding your time and knowing the perfect moment to like, Strike. Right. Because you have to think about it. 
would it have been really fun and interesting to have both Carrie and Sasha on the same season? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I highly doubt Sasha would have accepted if Carrie got accepted and she didn't. Because I think mm. she, is the first, she is a figure that would not want that to play a role in what they do on the show. Right. It's interesting that you bring that up because I did have a theory. I think we discussed it in post-show last episode um, when we were talking about the, the potential outcome of the season. And I was like, if Sasha doesn't win, I could totally see them putting the two of them together against each other in an All-Stars. Mm. You know, the House of Colby, you know, uh, battle back, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um all right, let's move on to swerves. <laughs> Why am I not surprised by this? David, what did, what was your swerve? <laughs> oh, okay. That part. Um, so the the top three, I mean four. Um, yeah, so I am giving complete swerves to the misdirect that they gave us the entire, not entire episode, but most of the episode of the, the last episode of the season, regular season, um, 14. The, we're definitely doing a top three because they now they say it at the beginning, like we're gonna have, we're gonna, one of you will be going home, yada, yada, yada. We go through the episode and we're seeing kind of the edit of Mistress's fumbling and her like not getting to choreo and Anitra having moments where she's not really confident and um, you know that kind of thing, and we have them give their their their, you know. I don't want to say sob stories, but that's the words that come to mind. Sob stories regarding the, um, the 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 chit chat. They don't mm -hmm. call it chit chat, chit chat. Uh, chat, chit chat. Yeah. And then we get to the um, runway, and surprise, surprise. Um, Anitra and Mistress are in the bottom. Um, Anitra is prepared. I will admit, I was not expect. I was not expecting that dress to change into um, a, a a dance costume, um, but it did. Go her. Uh, but Mistress is in a sixty pound beaded, bangled like gown that is probably not easy to walk in, let alone move around in. Um, and we go through this lip sync that I'm going to be honest, Anitra Slade. Um, and then we get, no, and then before that, before the lip sync, we get to them having the conversation. And Ruth specifically says something that hasn't been mentioned or said all fucking season. Which is, I have never, I, I, I made a rule to myself that I was going to eliminate a queen every time or every episode, I think mm -hmm. I said. And I just don't know what I'm going to do. Girl. And here we are. And then we get to the end. And for the first time this season, Shantae, you both stay. Hang on. And the winner is... We have a tie! <laughs> tie? Oh my god. What do you mean tie? <laughs> <laughs> that was what I imagined. That was Damon watching the episode 14 <laughs> blame it on the edit reveal of who's making it to the finale. And he channels Noxima Jackson from Tu Wong Fu. Thanks okay. for everything, Julie Newmar. When she's like, tie? What you mean tie? Yeah. And I just, it, I, it, I know you're going to, you're going to talk about this later. So I won't, I won't keep going, but like, that's my swerve. Mm. I don't like this misdirect that we were given. Um, and then it seems pretty fucking clear when we get to that point of the episode, when she's having this conversation with the judges about, and then she makes that random ass comment. 
and I'm like, okay, we know what's happening here. Yeah. Like, might as well not even have them lip sync and just have them just come out on stage and just say you both win. I honestly was surprised there was a lip sync. Like, I was like, oh, so we're going to have a top four. And I just expected her to tell them to not actually have them lip sync against each other. So I was like, right, right, right. I'm so confused. What is going on in this episode? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that part, that's me. Um, that's, that's, that's my swerve. Okay. Scary. <laughs> um, well, I have two. Uh, one of them is the reunion readings. Mm. Some were some were good, but I don't know. I'm not sh- I'm not sure about this being a piece of the reunion because I feel like it it, it has a time and a place, and it really makes sense well, in the competition. But like in the reunion, I get that you're allowing the queens who are eliminated to actually do some readings, but I'm like, but it's edited again. So the edit yeah. chooses the conquers and the, the good ones. So I'm like, right. eh, I don't know. I just, I don't think it's necessary. I genuinely don't think it's necessary. What is the point? Is to like have this moment where like the queens that were eliminated who weren't, oop, I'm going to say it, weren't good enough to like get to the the point where they do the reading. And I think they did it pretty early, if I'm remembering. Um, but they weren't good enough to do the read, get to that point. And I think it was only a few queens that would have been eliminated at that by that point. Right. I have to check and see when they actually did it. But uh, the, so what was and you know, reading is something again that kind of happens and needs to be done in like that moment. Yes, we know it's coming. Yes, you know, no one's a, not everyone's a comedian, whatever, but like at least you have the camaraderie of the competition to kind of push things forward. At this point, we're all coming together, and to me, we're all we all made it on the show, and we're coming back together to like celebrate that, right. And talk about things, the good and the bad, the you know whatever. For the so, why do we need to then also read? Like, what what purpose does it give? Right. No, I agree. It it just kind of it's a, it feels like a little bit of filler in the in the reunion, and I don't know. I just wasn't really super impressed with it this year. I was like, well, yeah. oh, okay, it's there. It wasn't. It wasn't that great. Uh, my other swerve, though. <laughs> And this is not production. This is just reality, baby. And you and I discussed this in in our uh, one-on-one chat. Woo, honey. Okay, so in the finale, (laughs) cracked faces. So if you didn't happen to watch the reunion or watch the finale, uh, so all four queens do solo songs, um, original songs that were written for them or written in collaboration with them or whatever. Um, and I'll probably touch more on that in just a little bit, but anyways, uh, and then Rue determines without the spin of a wheel or any of that shenanigary, because now everyone thinks that it's been rigged every single year. So I guess they decided to avoid that drama. Uh, so Rue just calls out who she thinks are the top two mm-hmm. based on the four solo lip sync performances, uh-huh. um, which kind of gets us back to this. Um, so she selects Anitra and Sasha in the top two. And that means Lux and Mistress do not move on. Ooh, honey. Um. Drag them. (laughs) This is, this is what it reminded me of. Are you sure? Like, like. Both of them were non-plussed. Non-plussed. And, and oh. what, what really shocked me was you could see it on both of their faces. They, 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 <clears throat> they edited and they showed a lot more of Mistress, like, being displeased and, uh, and upset and bothered. Because then they do that really nice moment with um, Leland and... Uh, Oh my God, his name went out of my head. Um, 
Orville Peck. Orville Peck, and they sing, you know, the drag anthem from the season from back wig loose. And they have all the queens come back out. Um, and then they do the uh, congeniality. The congeniality one is, is the one that they really got mistress on because apparently she thought she was going to win, could, could win congeniality. She also, spoiler alert, didn't win that one either. Um, woo. I'm shocked. <laughs> this is my shocked face. So I take that as you felt she didn't deserve to win congeniality. Oh, absolutely not. Okay. Okay. Um, I thought it was interesting that someone brought up and said, why can't, why didn't, why can't the winner also win congeniality? Is there a rule against that, against that? Which I thought was wild. And I was like, boy, that would really shake things up and, and, and change things. But I have a funny feeling the whole point of the congeniality was, was, cause remember, I think it was what, it wasn't called congeniality. What was it called? There was a point when they mentioned it as being fan favorite. Yes. But that was before, that was when the audience was voting on it. Yes. Um, this, like, I think not too long after, I think it was. What well, was uh, Valentina? Valentina. Yes. That they stopped doing it with the um, uh, audience, like, voting and changed it over to um, the Queen's voting, who was the most, who was Miss Congeniality. Correct. So yeah, the the cracked faces, baby. Whew, yeah, that was that was something else. And and so I had reached out to Damon, and I was like, I would think more so, Mistress than Lux, that she would know. Like cameras are everywhere, optics are important. Like, and you've been through fucking pageants. Like, be poised, well, be proud. Mm -hmm. Like, don't don't put some stank face on. And like she wasn't, she wasn't looking proud. She was looking no. annoyed, <laughs> and I was like, "Damn!" That that like, it wasn't quite a blank face. It was no, definitely. It, a, it wasn't like, a resting bitch face. No, but it was definitely like a shit. Like, well, hell, some. It was something. There was something yeah. about her, in particular. And mistresses too, but her in particular, there was a moment where I was looking at her and I was like, Yeah, you you are not you are not happy that you're it, not moving on. It's also like they didn't watch the television show. I was like, had you watched the edit that was happening, it was so obvious who the top two were going to be. Like, I I honestly thought, well, we're gonna have the wheel and like one of the one of the non top two queens will pick one of the top two queens, like, you know, and then we'll have this lip sync smackdown, blah, 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 like thing. And they, you know, they went back old school several seasons and they gave them all original numbers with choreography, mm -hmm. yada yada, and they did mm -hmm. that. Um yeah. and and that was nice to see, but also confusing. And here's why it's confusing. Um, a nature was up first. Were they in alphabetical order? Yeah, I think they were. Anitra, Lux, Mistress, and then Sasha. So they were in alpha order. Here's the reason uh, that, that things were weird to me is I didn't – I was so confused because Anitra starts doing her song and I was like, oh, okay, she has an original song but it's not her voice? Mm -hmm. And then we get to Lux's song and it's Lux's voice. And we get to Mistress's song and it's Mistress's voice. And then we get to Sasha. And honestly, I can't recall now that we're recording if it was <laughs> Sasha's voice or not. No, it was. Well, I don't know. And, and that's sort of the thing. No, I no, no, no. It kind of wasn't. And here's why. If you have watched classic Sasha Colby competition, um, like pageant stuff, she is known for very specific things. And Damon and I are old enough to understand and know this callback. There was this infamous drag queen like anthem song back in the day. Um, I think it was Club Sixty Nine was was the group or slash album that had done it. And there was this infamous song called Drama, and it was this spoken word number where the where the queen is like you know talking about how she is the drama and like you can't handle it and it's like this big thing and <laughs> sasha did a number of numbers 
incorporating that like clips of that kind of stuff including the whip cracks which was the head turns and like so she she did a lot of that in her number so it was like serving up the best of sasha in so many ways um so i was like very confused when anitra was up first and i was like but th- that's not anitra's voice i don't think like i don't understand what's going on here yeah. and i was like so then i expected all the numbers to not be their voices I mean, I'm curious, and I have to, I, again, I probably have to go back and listen again, but I'm wondering if um, Anitra, again, if it was everyone else, if you had an option, I'll put it like that. Maybe mm-hmm. there was an option. You can sing it yourself or rap it or speak it yourself, or you can have us do like a studio, you know, recording version right. of it, what have you. And you had a choice. If that if that's the case, then so be it. And then Anitra made the choice to do it, and Sasha probably chose to 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 do like someone else right. doing the vocals because they maybe didn't feel like that would be good for them. Anitra's I can understand because Anitra's was very it was sung if I'm remembering, and I don't know mm-hmm. if she could have done it that well. Just to be honest, not trying to. No, I know. And I was honestly a little disappointed in her song, like, and, and like, just its focus, mm-hmm. its choice. Like, it's very on brand for her. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, eh. like, mm. this, like, uh, honestly, your competition number at the beginning of the whole season, like, your talent yeah. number of your own was better than this. Mm. So I was confused. I did like I liked the performance. It came out strong, and she yeah. came out strong for being first, and for um, uh, the choreo and what she did was really mean. She looked gorgeous, those kind of things. Right. Um, but other than that, yeah, I get what you mean. I mean, I guess the part of me is like they they ended the season knowing the four of them were in the top four. And I was like, do your homework, children. Like, you've got 9, 10, 11 months, however long it is, until the finale comes around. Read up on your competition. Like, you, you're you back home. You can jump on the internet. Uh, Lord knows I've watched a ton of Sasha Colby videos this season to, like, get a feeling for her. And I'm like, fuck, this is the bitch. Like, this is the one mm-hmm. that you have to beat. And it's not mm-hmm. going to be easy. So I was so, sort of surprised <clears throat> that it didn't seem like that much preparation went in. And I don't know if that's the right way to phrase it, but when we got to the finale and we saw the way it was laid out, I was like, <clears throat> okay, you get one number, one yeah. chance, mm-hmm. that's it. So either you come guns a blazing and you really sell the fuck out of it or you don't. And unfortunately, I think, you know, they kind of didn't. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I thought that I thought the that whole thing, but the cracked faces, ooh, baby, they. Yeah, they were, they were something. They were they were not happy, and I was and I was really kind of surprised because with both of them, like Lux is younger, so I wasn't kind of surprised that she would have been like a little pouty and upset and whatever. But I was like, wow, Mistress really does fucking play a head game, and she admitted it, um, you know, in and talked openly about the fact that she went into the season, and like. I think it was in the What You're Packing. Her and Michelle went back and forth and talked about very openly that Mistress had a game plan and it was to rattle everybody all season long as much as she could. She fully owned it. And I was like, all right, girl, like, that's what you did. And for some of the queens, it really did work. It really did kind of like, you know, mess them up in a way. Um, I find it interesting that she didn't quite get a villain edit. You mean Lux? No, mistress. Mm. I don't. I don't really consider her getting a villain edit. I. I it's can hard s- to say. I. I think the production had a really good time with her, and probably the editors were told or knew that she went to the end, so they didn't give her the like worst drag queen in the world edit that you know she needs to be destroyed, um, and hated by the world. I mean, the fandom already did that on their own. So, and that's a whole other issue that I found very interesting that came up in the reunion, right? Where they talked about social media and the fandom and defending each other and that kind of stuff. Um, And I heard some criticisms that people thought that the reunion was very tame because a lot of the queens knew they they were forcing themselves to be on the best behavior because they didn't want to have to deal with the aftermath. 
there's something to be said about uh, understanding that again, and it's it's an unfortunate side effect of this show and the popularity that it has is that there is a rabid un- like part of the fandom that is immediately negative to someone that provides a negative comment or critique or statement or something about a queen that they love. And it it I it I will own it it has bothered me for a while that people can be so quick to say just like the worst possible things to someone um just because they disagreed or didn't like what another queen said to them or did during the, an episode that happened again for those playing at home um the show was recorded over almost a year ago um like they they there's they are they are sequestered mm-hmm. and the only people that they really get to see are production staff the judges and the other queens right so guess what if you don't like somebody if you're not a fan of a queen or for whatever reason if you're not a fan of a person guess what you kind of have to be there with them for x how many weeks if you're there right or days that you're there yeah um and it's it's unfortunate that the queens have to deal with that when they also don't aren't responsible for the editing and the production staff we've we've talked about this before where it's very interesting the queens kind of know that they're coming on a show as opposed to queens in the past um and it's not having as big a social media presence then there was a lot of that like drag you know like reading and and cuntiness i'll use that word fuck it um from like you know seasons past that is gone and the main reason it's gone is because the queens know that their harshest critics are sitting there in front of a keyboard waiting Mm -hmm. right 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 Mm. yeah there's that that's fair all right so let's move on to nerve um okay i think yeah I think you and I are talking like obviously about two different things, but I think we're also talking about two different episodes. So what do you, what do you give a nerve for? Um, I'm giving nerve to Mistress's finale lip sync look and the okay. lip sync in and of itself. Okay. Um, you had some nerve with that outfit. I'm like the, the, I knew it was reveal. Like from the get go, like let's let's not paint it what it is. Like you have clearly a like coat, like it's clearly a coat. And then you took the coat off. And I have problems. And Jim and I actually talked about this at, at length after we saw it. There are things that are just weird and off. Mm-hmm. She has these crystallized or crystal like fabric, like glove garter things. And then she has the same things on her feet that connect to the the waist of this dress that she's wearing. But the bottom of the dress, the skirt is rouged up the front and is assless in the back <laughs> for some reason. For some reason. And and it just doesn't nothing is connected. Like none of it is connected. There's a very structured top. There's these moments here that I get, like that's a drag thing. I've seen that a lot, like the, the crystal like cut out glove thing. Um but why the boot strap stirrup or tap. I don't I don't I don't quite get it. And, and and again it's connected at the waist to a roof skirt and an assless back. It none of it n- none of it works. 
So do you think the design had some delusion? <laughs> yes. After <laughs> fucking <laughs> I don't know what was going on. I would have loved it if she had put some more effort into or thought into what, like, because, like, the queens had the the guys, her dancers, had those umbrellas and had, like, the swirl pattern, like, the whole, like, hypnotized moment. I would have loved that, like, right here on, like, the titty. Mm. It's, like, kind of, like, the delusion, the delusion kind of, like, thing something else needed to happen with this outfit that I don't think was meant to happen. I don't, I just, there was, it just was a big misstep and I give it nerve because I'm like, you had nerve to, to wear that and, and, and use like use it with the song delusion. Like it just like, that was sort of my nerve moment. Cause I was like, you have delusion in this moment because you, think this is all right I, I i there's a part of me that's struggling damon i'm wondering if it was a meta commentary on like just drag and drag fashion because there was a part of me that was like oh so we're serving a fever dream i guess like that's what this is because this is obviously like the the horror scary naughty nurse like kind of aspect see right right like we're struggling we're not quite clear on yeah. it and so, because we're not quite clear on it, we're not really understanding it. Therefore, we're not really in on it. Yeah. And that's again, again, that's sort of where the, the I think it falls. Yeah. It's like if you had, if it had, if it had made sense or like worked in a way, I I, I would have gotten it better. I just think yeah. the, the the nurse moment. I don't think it worked mm. and yeah so that's that that's me Gary um so uh Anitra's final runway lip sync reveal ah. so this is not the finale mm -hmm. this is the blame it on the edit lip sync between mm -hmm. Anitra and mistress mm-hmm and I agree with you, because I think you referenced this just a little bit ago. Anitra is in this crushed blue velvet gown. Right. Shoulder to toe, like to the floor. It has all this crystal, like, applique embellishment beading. Um, mm -hmm. This white sculpted head, like, hair. Like, I mean, it was, it was, it was like, um, and, and I'm not the one to say this. It reminded me of, like, a a video game fantasy anime kind of come to life thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, when she turned the corner, I was like, Oh damn. I was yeah. like, okay, we, we serve yeah. a glamour. We're serving mm -hmm. high. Like we're, mm -hmm. we're doing all this thing. And then we go to start the lip sync. And I was like, Oh, these two fucking bitches. Like, like they're stuck, <laughs> you know, having to scoot, scoot, you know, in, in these looks. <laughs> On the stage, and I really felt for Mistress because she talked about the fact on, you know, as she her voiceover that it costs six, you know, that it not how much it costs, but that it weighs sixty pounds, and like the leopard cheetah print thing is beaded, not the actual fabric underneath, and blah blah blah, and like you know, and you're and you know, this is one of her good good dresses from the closet, you know, the pageant staple mm -hmm. thing that she had custom made, mm -hmm. so that's why she wore it, and it all made sense. And then, a nature does this little shimmy. Mm -hmm. And drops the bottom part of her blue velvet outfit into like a dance leotard deal. And I was like, you fucking bitch. I was like, she came prepared to lip sync in the finale. Like she thought ahead about that. It was uh -huh. like, if I have to lip sync to get into the very, very top. I will be able yeah. to still like do things because I'm not going to be encumbered by my outfit. Mm -hmm. And to and me, that made her the clear winner. I was like, yep. like, like some people might call it a little bit of a stunt, but I was like, to me, that's preparation. Mm -hmm. She came prepared. Yeah. She was, she's wearing her, her dance, like booties. Like, did you not see that? But she's wearing that booty that she wears. Yes, like, yes, yes, yes. But they were kind of hidden underneath the gown. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they yeah. were able to be hidden under the gown, but she, like, again, like, you know, 
Like, she knew that they would be hidden enough to where you wouldn't necessarily see them unless you were really, really paying close attention. Right. And then when she took off the the, the skirt, essentially, of this dress mm-hmm. and made the reveal, she, she was ready. And she had her dance shoes on and she walked that fucking duck and all that other shit. Now, I do have yeah. to say, if Mistress had been able to pull off that same stunt... With her gown, mm-hmm. like, I would have been absolutely gagged and, like, probably passed out to watch, like, 30, 40 pounds of beads just fall to the floor. I mean, presumably attached to fabric, you know, so that yeah, it just, like, yeah, releases yeah. and drops. But that that would have been the gaggery. Um, but I, when that happened, I was like, okay, I see you. I see you, lady. You, you came prepared. You serving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was so good, so good. So that being said, you want to move on to our uh, next segment? Sure thing. All right. All right, childrens. It is time for snaps and eye rolls. This is the um hits and misses basically from these last episodes of season 15 what we uh, lovingly refer to as the highs and the lows so damon who are you giving snaps to so i've got a couple of things and most of, all of this is from the finale okay um um the first one is giving local bars praise mm-hmm. um they had a moment right at the very beginning and i think they kind of went back and forth to some of the to back to some of the bars throughout the episode. But um, they're showing a lot of like local bars in particular um, play in Louisville and um, crossings in Lexington, two bars that I'm familiar with um, and recognize someone that I know um, in the, in the crossings one. And I was like, Oh, look at that. I know her. You could have um, been on television. I could have been on television. Well, anyway, it just and it just goes to show like and and Jim noticed this and I didn't that I think they use they picked specific bars in locations where the drag race band or drag bands and whatever are kind of popping up or have already passed. Mm. Um, I think there was there was a bar there was bars in Tennessee there was bars in Kentucky um, bars in Texas. Um, I'd have to, I didn't write them all down. It, was, it went really quick, just so you are aware. Right. Um, but that moment was really, really poignant because it is showing, um, despite Drag Race being this big, you know, franchise show, a lot of these queens come from locations like that. Mm-hmm. They come from those shows. I think there's a queen on this season that came from Nashville, if I'm remembering correctly. Maybe I'm wrong. I'd have to go look. And I'm going to look right now because I think I have it up already. Aura mm-hmm. Mayari. Right. Yeah. Is, is so Nashville. So they talked about it in the um, reunion. Reunion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, oh, come on. Sorry, I'm already at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I realized that as I was scrolling. Yeah. And Mistress is from Texas. So that thing. So that's something there. Anyway, so that just is a really wonderful moment. In addition to wonderful moments during the episode, there was the message. Um, it was a message from drag fans everywhere, and they kind of spoke to, um, like, the purposes and beauty of drag and the excellence of drag. And you had, like, Kevin Bacon, and you had some, I think, some um, drag queens, but it was mostly just, like, regular people. I also clocked in particular... The teach one of the teachers, if not more than one of the teachers mm-hmm. from um, the recent um, makeover seat, um, episode. Yes, and it just it was just this wonderful kind of again poignant moment, um, and it's one of the first times in a long time that the show has been really really political, in a sense that they are actually making a statement, right. Um, and yes, you had the, the the ACLU Drag Defense Fund. They have that still going and asking people to donate, which was a great like kind of cherry on top. But it it was a great time. It was a wonderful experience to see because we know 
oftentimes, especially RuPaul, has been very like quiet and silent on mm. um, issues. Um, and it was, you know, funny how they filmed, and she mentioned this in the in the finale, they filmed the Wigloose musical like a year ago. Mm-hmm. They didn't know all of this was really, really going down, but they were kind of predicting the future with that. Right. Um, in a weird way. And it, it just shows you, they, I think real, realistically they couldn't hide from it. There was, they could not have, they couldn't have, Correct. Uh, they couldn't have just like, meh, you know, like let it go past. They had to say and do something, and I'm so glad they did. Um, if you're on YouTube, hey, we're here for you. Hi. Um, like and subscribe. Um, uh, the the recent um, videos that came out on Rupert Drag Race are, are fundraisers for the ACL, ACLU the Drag Defense Fund. So if you Click on any of like the the um, I think it's even here on the blame it on the edit if I'm not mistaken. Yep, there it is. So, yeah, a lot of the videos are now kind of having that like link in the corner or link on the side of like the donate. Yeah, I agree with you. I thought that was really nice that they did that. I also agree that they kind of couldn't ignore it mm-hmm. or act like it wasn't happening. And I've been thinking about RuPaul's silence. Like, there's been some heavy criticism about how she hasn't said shit about a bunch of things. And in particular, the drag bands and the trans, like, bands and this kind of stuff. And then I thought about it, and I'm like, well, unfortunately, I think Ru is being a little too cerebral or, like, up in the head about this. And here's why. Because Ru's message is, get registered, go vote. And Ru's not wrong because technically how all this stuff started was because of who got elected if if Mm -hmm. you had if the population majority had elected other individuals these laws would not be put up to potential vote or passing Mm -hmm. and so i get that that it's very practical to say you need to be registered to vote but there's a part of it where it's like but it's too late Mm -hmm. like sure you can be registered now for primaries that are coming up locally this spring and, you know, and then also be ready for November because it's pretty much every year, not every four mm-hmm. years, not even every two years. Like it's constant ongoing stuff and you need to kind of be engaged on your civilness about what's happening in your township, your municipality, your county. Like, you know, mm-hmm. um, if you're in Louisiana in your parish, like, you know, and, and and all these things that, you know, you you have to know what's happening and take some action and, you know, and take a little bit of time to know, you know, who the hell's being put into office and what's their values and what are they going to propose and, and that kind of stuff. But also it's like, baby, laws are being passed now. Like it's, it's becoming yeah. highly problematic and they're being passed with such haste so quickly mm-hmm. without consequence of understanding that, like, as Willem pointed out, three Broadway productions currently have drag in them. So if... New York, for some reason, was to pass such a law, those Broadway shows would have to shut down and they can't right. tour. Like, you know, it, it's been interesting how there's been some, like, you know, a uh, discussion about this up to and including, like, um, you know, technically, does this mean that, like, cancer survivors could be thrown into jail because they're wearing, like, prosthetic breasts, because they're wearing wigs, because, uh-huh. like, you know, like, you know, it, and, and that's the that's the the kind of craziness about all the stuff that's happening is it's like you know it, and, and it keeps kind of coming back ridiculously to this you know Simpsons me what someone think of the children and it's like the children were never the problem the children right. have never been like having an issue it's the right. adults that are that are where yeah. a lot of this problem lies so I do think yeah. that the that the defense fund and that whole thing was a really good um mm-hmm. yeah I just it, item that they put together I I Again, it, as you kind of said, it, it, it is a little too little too late, but, you know, it's what we try, you know, it, I wish, you know, there's a part of me that wishes that we could have gotten these things out sooner, but, you know, we don't know what's coming. And like you said, these, these laws are being drafted and passed so quickly with no real full oversight of the repercussions that they can cause. Mm-hmm. 
you know, there are situations where this could be a problem yeah. for regular folk that they don't think uh, they didn't think about until now. Well, I mean, just just this weekend, I think it was on Friday. I can't remember the name of the organization, but there's a body that put out a full bulletin notice, I believe, to the press. And it's been online and social media that they are warning against people going to Florida. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just flat out saying, yeah, like Florida is a problem state. Like you do not have a protection as a trans person. You don't have a protection as an entertainer. You don't have protection as an LGBTQ person. Like, right. do not do not support this state. It is a problem. And if you visit there, you may find yourself in trouble. And I was like, wow. Yeah, like, that's awesome. that's not happened in our lifetimes. Like, that, where there, people are just like, absolutely don't do that. And I think about how, like, we know about events that happen there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, that's really <laughs> kind of crappy, you know, that, that – um, the state may have to take a hit on tourism and on other things, you know, and people are making plans to move and like, you know, get out of Dodge basically. Cause they're like, screw this noise. Like I'm not sticking around if this is going to be acceptable. Right. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's kind of wild. I agree with you that I thought it was nice that they did do the, especially the local bars piece. I liked that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was pleased to see like the live feed, presumably live feed um, of, you know, the crowds at the different locations um watching the finale of that so yeah that was that was nice so what about you um i had one and then i just added another one uh cornbread's rap in the finale for the miscongeniality i too am a little confused on cornbread's look like it was so well executed yet i didn't know what she was trying to tell us with the look like, I was like, is this a riff on Alyssa Edwards' Beast? Like, you know, like, <laughs> or is this, like, some strange thing about the Lion King? Like, I I just, I wasn't sure, but I also kind of didn't care because I just thought it was so well done. Mm -hmm. And then she's prancing around on stage doing this rap about all the queens from the current season. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Production let you, like... Because I think Cornbread came up with this on her own and pitched it to them and was like, when I go to do Miss Congeniality, I want to do a little ditty, like, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it wasn't very long and it wasn't, you know, high production or anything. She just, you know, talked about all the queens or whatever, and uh, mm -hmm. but in a really fun way. And I was like, damn, like yeah. that, that was a highlight. Um, I was very, very proud of her. Um, in addition to that, the Lifetime Achievement Award. Mm. Now, I do want to say this. I got really fucking worried because I thought this was an in memoriam segment and I somehow missed the news that oh, the recipient no. had passed away. Oh, no. <laughs> I seriously did because I was like, oh, my God. Um, so for those that may not have seen the episode, they gave a Lifetime Achievement Award to Bob Mackey, who is still alive. Uh, but that wasn't obvious when the video started because it's this lovely montage of all the work that Bob has done over <laughs> decades with all these like mega superstars and even some drag queens. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, did he fucking die? Did I not know this? <laughs> but he's not dead. Thank God. But he is older. Um, understandably, they especially recognized he was the first guest judge of the mm -hmm. first season ever. And to be honest, like looking back on it, I'm like, wow, that really was significant. Like, I think when I watched it, what, 14 years ago or whatever, I took it for granted. I already knew who Bob Mackey was and I knew of his reputation and what he had done up to that point. So I didn't think twice about the fact that RuPaul got Bob Mackey to be a, you know, guest judge because I was like, well, obviously if you're going to have yeah. a, a competition with outfits and stuff, yeah. Bring and, bring some of the best of the best. And we know that some of the original like ideas behind Drag Race were that it was going to be more of a project runway ish kind of competition as opposed mm -hmm. to a drag full on drag competition. We knew that that was sort of the original intentions behind the show. Right. And that's why like Santino when and <laughs> uh, uh, and again having Bob Mackie on and all that stuff. It kind of made sense. And it was the giving us life 
Lifetime Achievement Award. I was trying. That's why I was looking down for. So, yes, I was looking at me. I was looking for. Why did I write that down? I know I wrote it down somewhere. Um, but yeah, giving us Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah. So um, I really much appreciated that. Uh, I'm glad they did it now. Uh huh. Maybe somebody in production whispered in Ruzier ear and was like, "You better do it soon." Um, I just felt. I just felt bad for him because they gave it to him. And he's just kind of like standing there holding it. And I'm like, he's going to drop that. Like, it's so like it was because he's holding it like this. And he's got like, because there's like a, like a, I guess like a flag or like the checkerboard flag. I think if I remember right. correctly. And it's got a base. So it's not a thick base. It's like one of those like just like thin enough where you can't really like get a real good hand on it. Um, I was like, oh, someone, someone, I, I said it out loud. Someone grab that for him before he drops it. Mm-hmm. That would have been a moment. <laughs> like, thank you for your award. Oh, this is for your... <laughs> well, I don't think it would have broken. But I all I did hear a rumor. Well, it's not a rumor. I heard on a podcast of somebody who went to the finale taping that there was an accident at the beginning of the show mm. and that it caused a delay. And there were some things that needed to be done before they could continue on. And I haven't been able to hear anything else about it. I imagine we probably won't for a while because of all the NDAs. Mm-hmm. Um, so it really, it really kind of intrigued me as to what the hell happened. Any reason I remember that just now is because you were because you said take that away before he drops it. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, and like, and I did feel a little bit for Bob because he's standing next to Rue, and like he is a diminutive gentleman, and and RuPaul is fucking like six foot seven, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I mean, th- there was that whole kind of sort of comedical like you know height differential but i was like she getting up there in age kid like you know um so i was like i i felt it i thought it was interesting that production made the choice to have bob stand there with rue to like throw it out to the next thing instead of like having bob escorted off stage and then rue Mm -hmm. like continuing on with the show Right. And I realized it wasn't very long, and maybe that's why they made that decision. But I was like, the least you could do was like, you know, have him exit, sort of, <laughs> you know, with with the like, Go Go Boys, with the like pit crew or something. What they should have done, and they, could they do it with every award show? There's always someone that, like, the person who gives the person the award, yes. usually kind of just like stands there. And what they could have done, I know it was one of the little Go Go Boys or pit crew, whatever, right? But like, have him present the award, stand there. And then, Rue, like they have their moment, and then escort them off the stage. Correct. And just, you know, and then move on. Right. Like, if I know, if you had, if you really could have thought about it, it would have been really fun to have Michelle Carson, one of the judges, present him with the reward, so that they could then walk him off stage. Right. And honestly, it probably would have been Carson, considering he's considered the fashion person, right. like opinion mm-hmm. of the judges going back to um, uh, Queer Eye for the Great guy. Yes. Yeah, right. So I, I think that would have probably been a good thing. But yeah, I don't know. So I, anyways, I'm glad that they gave the award. I'm curious to see who they're going to give future awards to because mm-hmm. I get the feeling they're going to make it an annual thing now. So hopefully. Yeah, I mean, technically, last year they recognized chocolate um, yes, from yes, Las Vegas. Right. Mm-hmm. So maybe that was them like field testing this as a concept. I don't know. Hard to say. All right. Uh, oh boy, let's move on to eye rolls. <laughs> Damon, you you have something slightly controversial. I feel like uh-huh. listed, and I'm not sure where you land on this, but go ahead. So I'm giving eye rolls to the comments and I believe it was Irene during the um, reunion mm-hmm. on Selena's accent okay, and how it was fake I think is what she the word she used during her read um, I could tell almost immediately and it gave me pause that Selena was not happy with that Selena was non plus, and she gave her a little okay, white girl like like statement moment, and then they moved on. And I'm kind of like, why are we moving on from this? What what is, like that's that's a statement. That was a that was a very odd 
where did it come from statement. And if I, I watched a couple of videos about it, but like someone is kind of indicating that there's a video of Selena um, auditioning or something for, or saying something for a show, like a contest or whatever. And she's speaking and she seems to be speaking in a clearer tone. Well, I was just going to ask you, Damon, if you've seen the video clip of Selena in as a boy mm-hmm. talking to camera, because I had seen it after mm-hmm. this came up and I was mm-hmm. honestly surprised. Yeah. And it, but it goes, to, there's a, there's a, there's an element that I think is not being addressed, which mm-hmm. is that oftentimes people of color have to speak and talk a certain way to get their point across. Oh, okay. And I don't know Selena. I've, I've, I, and there's, there's two sides to this. One, there's real, like, uh, I forgot his boy name. It just dropped my, dropped out of my head as I was talking. Um, oh, I don't have it down here. I know I didn't put it in the, <laughs> the talk sorry oh it's normally in the um on the on the wiki but it's not which i've had open this whole time so oh. the the fandom wiki, not the right wikipedia so bear with me one second because i want to say this correctly i want to say it's that. joshua yeah maybe oh hell, hell you don't even have it son of a bitch anyway that's fine <laughs> <laughs> Normally they have it, and and I'll, I'll look it up, but that's fine. It's, it's fine. Anyway, um, there's a, there's there's probably a voice that if they're just hanging out that they use. The other side of it is is Selena a character? Mm-hmm. Which then means there's probably going to be some exaggeration. There's probably be some characterization done to that person that persona as it were and that could be where the accent quote unquote is coming from because you can he, you can tell when Selena is talking when she's like serious or having her moments there's 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 something there there's an accent there quote unquote um but it's not as strong as when she's Selena on in a in a in an acting challenge or Selena performing um, or saying something or rapping or whatever, there's definitely a difference. And right. But that again, does it was it active as regards to a characterization or is it I'm speaking to someone who may not necessarily or at least with that video in particular um, where they were kind of making the reference. Um, Am I holding back my accent so that I can potentially get a job? Right. So I have two thoughts. Um, one, I'm in agreement with the with the concept of the idea that we probably haven't seen in a long time, honestly, in Drag Race, that the voice is a part of a personification of the character of your drag. Um, James Mansfield is an example of this. Right. James Mansfield um, is an homage to Jane Mansfield, the Hollywood starlet. And so James puts on this high squeaky voice mm-hmm. when he's fully done up. Um, mm-hmm. I, I subscribe to James's channel. I've been watching James for several years now and does amazing wig work and um, like has explained concepts of puppetry and like, you know, kind of all sorts of things. And I find it really interesting. And when James does their mug or does hair, if they're fully done up, they tend to stay in the in the James Manfield voice. Right. But if they're not done up, then you get more of the boy voice. Mm-hmm. And, there, and there is a difference between the two. They're kind of similar, but notably the boy voice is a little lower and doesn't have the squeak at all. And so I think it's been a while since we've seen a drag persona that is really like a whole other character outside mm-hmm. the person. And that's how drag used to be, like classic right. drag that you and I know from way back in like the 60s, 70s, and 80s, men would affect their voice, mm-hmm. and instead of speaking in a lower register, they would kind of put on a, a higher, like, t- 
tone of voice and it would be very, you know, kind of breathy mm-hmm. because you were trying not to be clocked. Like, you mm-hmm. know, there, w- there was this illusion aspect to drag, even though you may not be trying to pass as a woman, you were affecting right. kind of as one. Yeah. And so I yeah. think, honestly, that's uh, one thing that needs to be recognized about this. The second part is, is I think it just hit me because Selena did this beautiful tribute look to Chi Chi Rodriguez from Tu Wong Fu. Thank you for everything, Julie mm-hmm. Newmar. Mm-hmm. At the finale, when you get them all the way to California and Chi Chi comes out in this beautiful gown and this short crop, you know, uh, wig. And I clocked it instantly when Selena was on the reunion. I was like, oh, my God, of course. But then it just occurred to me, Damon, I wonder if if um, by the way, their boy name is Jason. Um, If Jason has been doing this sort of a la tribute to John Leguizamo, because John Leguizamo is a like, I think, first generation immigrant American to the U.S., and has infamously done drag as Broadway shows, as stand-up stuff. And that was, I believe, how John got booked for the movie was because he was able to put on this Latin, like, mm-hmm, cha-cha, mm-hmm. like, you know, kind of thing. And so Chi-Chi is a representation of that. But if you watch John just talk normally, he's very different than the drag persona that he plays in the movie or that he's done in stage shows. Right. Um, Whoopi Goldberg did this in her infamous like smash one woman show back in the day that was an HBO special eventually. Like she was just so masterful in putting on characterization. And I like I get goosebumps thinking about it now because it's like it's it's must see like right. Uh, right. not right. television, right. but like just entertainment. Mm-hmm. To see someone take on a whole new physicality and a voice and a look with just like a a head wrap or a hat mm-hmm. or like just a single mm-hmm. like clothing yeah. prop. Um, and I think yeah. that's what Selena is probably doing, like what Jason is doing with Selena. But I think like so much of the drag landscape has moved into like they don't really do that anymore. And so like Sugar and Spice – they sound the same and boy, whether they're in drag or not. Do you know what I, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. And that's kind of, I can see that. And I can think that may be the situation. So I just I wanted to bring it up as yeah. a kind of an eye roll because I hate that it wasn't discussed or addressed at the moment. Yeah. Because we know that Selena's heritage has played an influential role in her yes. drag and what she's been doing. Right. And to kind of just like laugh it off. Yeah. It, when it looks, it seems very clear that it is, it, it, it's, it hit her the wrong way. Right. Well, and, and to be fair, like, I think she's a little tender because of criticism that's been online. And I think she was understandably sore about the fact that the edit in which she did the, the outfit that was a tribute to her mother, like, coming here as an immigrant across the border. Um, she had more to say about that runway, but they cut her voice over mm-hmm. and didn't like give the full story as to like why she picked that and that kind of stuff. Right. Um, I th- So I can see where she's just probably a little bothered in general. Right. And so to have another queen kind of try to clock her for like having a, authentic, right. Having it, having another voice. It's like, and, and yeah. that's where I was like, oh, okay. And she might have been like, is this how we're playing? Okay, I see. I see you. Mm-hmm. Not not a fan. And that's unfortunate, you know. And yeah. um, I would like to see her come back in an All-Stars uh, yeah. if she think... decides to do it, you know. Yeah. So what about... <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, you already talked about this. Um, so mm-hmm. my eye oh, rolls are right. <laughs> for production's disappointing top four save. And I call it that because I'm not really sure, like, yes, technically all the decisions ultimately are Ruse, but I was really just disappointed that it turned into this thing when Ruse, like, I promised myself this season that I would eliminate a queen every single episode. And I'm like, oh, for the love of everything, Mary, like, get off the cross. Like, <laughs> I was just like, I don't I don't have time for this, uh-huh. you know? Uh-huh. Um, 
Let me, uh, let me think about this. All right. I've had it officially. Like, I just feel like it was heavy, 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 heavy handed Mm -hmm. um, in terms of production, because I understand going into the finale with four makes a lot more logistical sense in one aspect than three. But three can be more interesting dynamically because you could have gotten three lip sync rounds Mm-hmm. Like you could have had them all kind of compete against each other in a round robin style mm-hmm. um, and and see how well they can do. But to be fair, this version was a little less torturous than like what the fucking season with got Mick, what they had to do, like what four or five fuck six fucking different designs in the finale it was insane. There were three looks from the at the beginning, mm-hmm. the red, white and or black, white and red all over. There were those three like very entrance looks. Then they each did, um, no, they 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 did lip sync for the crown. They did, I think, the spin. They spin the wheel. Yes, they spun the wheel. Right, and so you had to potentially have three prepared looks plus two runway plus, like yeah. s- like competing song looks and mm-hmm. your arriving at the gig look on the red carpet. Your first time seen on the stage look you're mm-hmm. like yeah i mean it, it just it was insane how much they had to do so this season the girls kind of got it better because they only had to like <laughs> do a couple of outfits in yeah. comparison but still yeah it was um i just didn't really care for the fact that they decided to do that it was very obvious to me that mistress was the one to be cut and to make it mm-hmm. a top three but you know yeah anyways. i just and, and i think they should have done it i secretly think as much as i Appreciated Mistress on the show, in a sense. Mm, that's that's a stretch. Um, I wouldn't say I appreciated Mistress being on the show. It, it was good. To, she was good TV. I'll put it like that. Um, but I think yeah. that that was her her time to go. Um, having said that, I do feel it made sense for the finale for them to have four. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. So that's, um, you know, pretty much it as far as the the show. And we've gotten to the end. And in case you missed what ultimately happened. The time has come. For you to lip sync for the crown. And the winner is Miss Sasha Colby, as it should be. Yes. Um. So, if you if you have not seen, it's actually been posted on YouTube. I, this is my favorite part of the whole season: is when they show the queens um, at their reveal <clears throat> of seeing who wins. They're all like, you know, in a produced segment kind of area. And so what I'm putting up are some shots of like the the very end of that when they went on the stage after it had been announced and Sasha was given the crown and scepter and Willow Pill, you know, kind of passed over the reins. I will say this. I appreciated in that little video montage. I might even include a clip of it here that uh, Mistress helped Sasha with her hair yeah. so that she could, you know, have her her crown and stuff properly mm-hmm. placed. Um, yeah. He did the little twist with the, yeah, I did appreciate that. And I think that that goes to show the conundrum that is Mistress because she can be so, like, antagonistic and, and like, you know, bothersome right. in some ways. And yet she truly is a drag queen's queen, like, sister. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But Sasha fucking won. As yes. she should have. As she should have. As she should have. So, yes. Um I, it was funny because I intentionally was trying to stay off media. Um, I got asked to work Friday evening with my second job. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll do that. Um, and I was going to go to the movies. But then I was like, I, I don't know, like maybe I'll wait till the weekend. And uh, consequently, I ended up jumping on Twitter for other reasons. And lo and behold, <laughs> as I said in the in our chat fucking faggots um (laughs) some of them were good and they didn't reveal who won but then a couple of them just outright like said it like you know and i was like 
and I was like disappointed because I didn't want to be spoiled um, because I wasn't going to go to the local bar to watch it live just because one, it might be a little crazy. And two, um, I I just don't care to go to our local space. There's nothing wrong with it as a business, but unfortunately they still, uh, at least for us here, they allow it uh, to have smoking. And so it's just not a thing that I enjoy um, as a, as a yeah. former smoker. Like I just don't want to smell like it um, and have to to yeah, deal with that. So I decided not to go. And I was like, all right, I'll just watch it when you know I'm able to see it online. And I figured I'd have to wait till like the next morning. And I didn't even have to wait that long. Like probably within an hour of it airing, I want to say. Oh wow! Um, I was able to catch it and watch it. So I was up late Friday night. But uh, I, it had already been spoiled for me. And yet at the same time, I was like, good. Like, <laughs> I mean. Can we can, let, let's be honest with everyone in this room? Hi, Jen. Um, everyone here, were we shocked? No. No, we were not shocked. But no. there was a lot of speculation that it was going to go to Anitra. Like, really? I think there was a lot of people that felt Anitra could have won. And, and I wonder, I thought about this because some folks did reach out to me and tell me that they were glad Sasha won. They thought it was well-deserved, but they were hoping Anitra would win. And it got me wondering about that. And I thought maybe it's because we as Americans love the underdog. Mm. And so we're, we really like connect with the concept of someone who comes from a certain place. And not that Sasha doesn't, but Sasha seems to have been a winner for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, she won Miss Continental, I think, in 2012, which was 11 years ago. Um, and she's just been in top shape, top form for a very long time. And and so I feel like people are like, well, it, it's kind of an obvious or it's a shoe in that she's going to mm-hmm. win. So I feel like some some fa- folks who watched, maybe not necessarily fans, yeah. but viewers might have been like, well, let the other, you know, let the other lady have a chance or, or whatever. Mm. Um I mean- Agreed. And FYI, there is, I don't know who has it, but I, I found a friend who posted it on their Facebook. There is video because they do do the double crowning at the, um, mm-hmm. not double crowning, but they they record both queens winning. Correct. And there is recording of Anitra's win um, out there. Oh, really? I'll, see if I can find, I can, I'll see if I can. I know who posted it, but... I'd have to see if I can find it elsewhere. Interesting. It's, it's, it's clearly a probably illegal uh, mm-hmm. video. Someone was, was recording like, and you could tell like the phone is like down and in like a weird like space to where, so they can get the, the video up of it. Let me see. I'll see if I can. Well, and, and so I reached out to someone who, came on to watching Drag Race during the most recent All-Stars, and they were like, oh my god, I love this show, and I was like, okay, hold up. I was like, because All-Stars, All Queens, All Winners was, like, very different than anything else, and, right. like, I don't want people to be misled and think that all the rest of the seasons are going to be like that, because they are not, so I was pleased to see that they were okay with watching the season, and so they've been kind of commenting along, um, and I, you know, m- made sure that, like, they knew how they could watch the finale, Um, But I also ended up sending them that live video from YouTube of the final four learning who actually wins. And then I explained to them, I said, this is my favorite part of the entire season, because now, ever since I think about season four, um, they've done the multiple like endings recording. Mm -hmm. And then like the queens honestly do not know until it airs who ultimately won. So they the four of them knew going into it that it was between Anisha and Sasha. What they didn't know was between the two of them who ultimately gets chosen. So, okay. um, yeah, like it's like, and so, and a couple of people who are, I guess, newer to that are kind of surprised or intrigued that, that that happens. But I'm like, yeah, they have to. Like, it's impossible today's day and age to keep it under wraps. Yeah, true, true, true. Huh. Yeah, I can't, I can't, um, it's it's very like I looked at the person who, who shared it, um, and it is not um, it is literally like custom. They pick so many people to see it, so um, that's okay. Maybe I'll maybe I'll share my screen once we're done with the <laughs> episode. So that being said, uh, 
it's the end of season 15, baby. Um, we have another winner. Uh, so congrats to Miss Sasha Colby. Um, it has your hype has totally been living up to everything. Right. Um, you know, she she definitely was the one to beat the whole season. Um, yeah. I agree that she was kind of quiet in the beginning, which I think might have been a little bit of strategy on her part mm-hmm. and that she delivered. And so I'm I'm very, very pleased. You know, that she really does have the whole package, Yeah, you know, she's and really she's brilliant. a goofball. Like the funnest yeah. thing about her, like, uh, did you watch the, if you watch that video of the final four real time reveal and then she gets on stage and she gets a scepter and crown and like, you know, she gets the, the microphone and she kind of talks a little bit or whatever, like that she has this laugh at the end. Like, it's so cute how she's just kind of a goof. And I think that's what makes her so endearing, um, you know, to a lot of people and uh, a number of people that know her, I guess, in L.A. especially, um, none of them knew about her grandfather. Mm. So when she revealed that in the Blame It on the Edit video, my understanding is a lot of people were shocked and had Mm. no idea that that had happened in her family Mm. and that. That was something that she went through um, and they just they didn't know how to handle that because I think she had that kind of revealed a sense of privacy amongst her about part of her life that that isn't necessarily for everyone or for even certain people. Um, And for me, that kind of got some respect because I was like, I don't think that your whole life should be on display. Um, And sometimes there are things about it that you don't necessarily share with even, you know, people who are close to you because, you know, it's a personal journey. And so I found that she just, I don't know how to explain it. Like she really seemed to have everything Mm. pulled together. So yes, it was very good. Let us know what you think, kids. Uh, you can go visit our website, CubsOutloud.com. You can leave a comment on, a, on our blog post there. You can send us an email, CubsOutloud at gmail.com. You can also uh, leave us a voicemail. Call us, 261, sorry, 361-265-8255. That's 361-COL-TALK. Uh, and um, we're not sure when COLDR will be back because, <laughs> uh, and I guess I missed this part. Maybe I'm yes. not that tuned in. When is All Stars? Is there an All Stars? May 12th. Oh, okay. Yeah. I they showed it it was a very quick prom, like announcement during the their, during the finale. It was very like it was surprisingly quick. Interesting. I don't think they wanted to do anything in regards to Rio and who Oh, excuse me. <laughs> who's on the show um, or anything. It's a very quick almost like maybe 10 15 second promo. Yeah, so that's a few weeks out. Um, and see, the version I saw has no ad, so I, I wouldn't have seen that ad at all. Um, and I haven't heard a, a whole lot of scuttlebutt about the All-Stars or anything necessarily. So, yeah. Um, so I guess that's coming up. We'll we'll talk more about like what we'll do with that. But, let, mm. you know, let us know. Reach out. Leave us a phone call. Send us a message. Uh, you can pretty much find us anywhere online uh, with one word, Cubs Out Loud. Uh, if you want to join the Telegram chat, uh, search for COL drag race and you may find it um it's an older group and i think telegram has updated a few times and so it may not like i can't i can't even have an invite anymore it's kind of weird so Mm. we might have to like do something about that we'll see um if you want to know about things that are going on with cubs out loud especially when the regular show is going to have a live to youtube uh recording you can go to bit.ly slash calendar dash col um, if you want to support us, there's several ways to do that. You can uh, buy some merch. You can go to zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud and pick up a few things uh, while you're there. You could get uh, some uh, different items that have the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo on them. Like Damon's holding up our coffee mug uh, that we have available. We also have a number of shirts. Um, both of us happen to be twinsies today wearing the Consent is My Foreplay Drag Pride shirt. Um, in navy blue and it has a uh, light blue and uh, pinkish purple and white stripes uh, with the crown and this is all based off of the drag pride logo uh, that flag that came out a couple years ago and um, we also have some new designs that recently just got posted for the regular uh, series that I'm super excited about um, so you can go check that out over there you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash cubs out loud for a dollar or more a month and you get the uh, extra long 
uh, uncut versions of the episodes, including what we call the bookends, the pre-show or the post-shows um, discussion. And if you want to just uh, make a generous donation to us as a one-time tip, you're welcome to do that. You can go to paypal.me slash cups out loud to drop some uh, coin in the bucket if you like. Um, you can also help promote Cubs Out Loud on all the different podcast platforms by liking us, subscribing, giving us five stars, leaving positive comments, sharing it with others. We appreciate it. Damon, where will people find you online? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at TheaterCub79. That's T A C A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. That Twitter is definitely not safe for work. <laughs> if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gibber73. Um, and with that, we're going to exit out to uh, the queens as they fade away into the sunset and we end up with our winner. Ooh. We'll talk to you later, kittens. Bye. It would help if I wasn't muted. <laughs> <laughs> that I, does help. I was just saying it was another rap on another season, you know. <laughs> <laughs>